Getting 69 attack is the first thing in the video on a hellhound and with 61 strength I can now enter the warriors guild and I don't really care about getting the dragon defender right now because I'm not really going to be doing a lot of melee. I am really only getting 70 attack to be able to use the arium staff but I might as well use the last level of attack training in the warriors guild and see how many defenders I can get because in the future I will need them anyways when I'm doing like melee slayer or stuff like that. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I am going to hit 70 attack here and I did anticipate to get more than the Iron Defender. I have killed, actually I can show you guys on the uh, rune lights here, I've killed 171 and the drop rate is 1 in 50 so I should have got 3.5 defenders but I only got 2. So that is a bit unlucky, but it is what it is. As I said, I don't really care that much about the defenders. I have to do that grind in the future, so it would be nice to get more of them, but right now I don't really need them. So now that I have 70 attack, I can use the Arum staff, and it is the staff I want to use. Let's unequip it and look at this. 5% magic damage as well as it has 15 magic accuracy and the Iban staff only has 10. So it is a better staff just straight up. It gives more damage, but the problem is if you use Iban staff, you can max it 25 even on 50 magic. But even if I have 75 magic, the Arum staff is not better than the Iban staff alone. But if you have the Tomo Fire, it actually makes the Fire Wave stronger than Iban's Blast, which is the goal I want to get. But of course, the Tomo Fire is a very RNG grind, but I will be doing it now and then, and I won't show any of it, so a lot of the video will just be me doing Winter Todd outside of the video. But what is the video going to be about? Well, I actually want to round out my stats a bit because my total level is like 200 behind some of the others in my group because I've just been grinding combat stats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start training up some of my lower skills when I'm not doing Winter Todd so we can actually get a decent total level and then in the background I can maybe get a Tomo Fire. As soon as I do I'm going straight into Soldra whenever that is. I have not been doing any birdhouse runs at all for just free hunter experience because finding these different hop seeds in this seed store has been basically impossible but I'm on pretty early today so I'm going to try to jump to different worlds and see if I can get any and then I'll get started with my hunter training passively because I already have the clockworks in my bank we got them made very early so it should be an easy start. As you can see, got myself some decent amount of seeds and made the basic birdhouses and it will take around 50 minutes and then I can come back here and get some experience. Probably only have to do like one run of the regular ones and then I can go for oak pretty fast because they give a lot of experience. I think a good thing to do meanwhile waiting for the birdhouses is just to do fishing because I have only 30 and that is kind of slacking because the rest of my group has done quite a decent amount of fishing for food. I have basically supplied no food for the group so I think this is a good thing to get up. So currently I'm I'm 43 fishing and 21 hunter but another skill I want to work on as well is farming only 17 and I need to get some super compost I think the best way of doing that is just buying pineapples and then making it myself in the charter ships so I guess I'm going to be world hopping a bit to get some of that. Also I realized I am actually above 35 fishing which means I can do temporos so I'm going to do that meanwhile waiting for the birdhouses and my super compost and all the farming stuff in the future as well. Just finished a farm run and I got 69 ultra compost as well so I had to mine some volcanic ash but uh, yeah that is a good starting amount and I've done some temporos as well soon 47 fishing. So I'm up to Willow Birdhouses now and look at the experience for 50 minutes. 560 times 4 of course because you can make 4 every 50 minutes. So that is like 2000 something experience, 2200 or something every 50 minutes. And then when I get to uh, the maple ones that is going to increase even more. So it is very nice experience casually. I'm just using my reward permits here. I had 20 and now I have 10 left and these flakes are really good because they duplicate fish. I'm not really sure exactly how they work. I've never really used them but I've read that they duplicate fish. So if I get a lot of these and I'm going to like fish sharks or something or maybe uh, crabs in the wilderness, duplicating them is of course very nice for Iron Man. But overall I got this loot and oh wow 131 seaweed. That's a lot of soda ash. But let's open these caskets, they can do, uh, or they can give jewelry and uh, rune items I think. Yeah, look at that, sapphire necklace, and the last one is jades. And there we have the first total level milestone I guess, 1.1k, I think I started around 1050, so we've gained 50 so far. 
Bit of a milestone, I guess. Just hit 50 fishing and in 8 levels, I'm probably going to stop doing temporos because at that point, I can actually do a barbarian fishing a bit more efficiently. I think you can start at like, after this, I'll just check real quick, but uh, I think you can actually start here at 48. But at 58, the experience rate is going to go up by quite a lot, so I think that's a good point to start barbarian fishing. Realize there is some free total levels to get as well from the Eye of Glothrine quest, just a quick detour from all the fishing and also been doing some winter tod. I have some crates stacked up in the bank that I want to open at the end of the video. And that is the Eye of Glothrine quest for 6000 runecraft experience, actually 12k magic as well. And that is from 9 to 23 runecrafting, so a lot of free total levels right there. And here we go, the last 7 experience at Temporos to get 58 fishing and I'm actually going to stop there. I feel like I've done enough fishing for this episode and I'm at 1151 total but now let's actually use all the reward permits. 159 reward permits, so let's see what we can get from this. Hopefully we can get one of the unique items. It is not looking so good. I actually only got 2 caskets from this so far, which is very low. I think when I got the uh, 50 or something last time I did this, I actually got like 3 caskets so that was very bad. I got some soaked pages and I got emerald bracelets and sapphire necklaces from the chests but another thing that is very good is just these spirit flakes that duplicates fish and all the raw food for cooking. Something very risky with the amount of money I have on my account is I have 165k by the way. Uh, I'm going to the Revenant because I need some money but it is of course very risky because you have to pay 100k to go in. If you get PK'd you lose it. But I have to try because Revenants were just updated. They drop more items and also they heal less. I should be easier to kill them this time around. So let's see if I'm going to just get PK'd or if I'm going to get some nice rewards. There is the fee, 100k, so let's do that. Yes, don't ask again, and uh, let's get started with uh, seeing if we can get any drops. There's two imps here, right? I thought it was only one here before, so that is probably a change, I would assume. New collection log item, Revenant Ether. only two of them though, so nothing too big. So this is one of the new things they actually put on the loot table, the blighted items that you can use in the wilderness only. So that is kind of interesting because you can get like blighted super stores I would assume and those could be really good for wilderness bosses in the future. I'm doing this unscald because I don't want to risk my black dehyde body and my amulet of strength but 3 runite bars from one single drop from a hobgoblin. That is not bad. <laughs> Another collection log item, Revenant Cave Teleport, and how many is it? Oh, only one. So, also some Blighted Manta Rays. What? Wait, that's so many Blighted Manta Rays. I thought it would be one. It's like 14 of them. You also get these Blighted Spell Sacks that allows you to cast different spells. For example, this one you can see here, Snare. I can cast it with only one of the uh, Blighted Sacks cast. But uh, I'm actually just going to go and get Skulled because I don't really think I need the Black Dead Body and the Amulet of Strength. So I'm just going to bring the uh, Dragon Scimitar and that's it. Okay, I feel like Hobgoblins is definitely the play. Look at how good the drops are. Two room plate bodies and before that I actually got four battle staves. They're just kind of hard to kill for me. Especially before I have the bracelet as well, I take a lot of damage. But uh, the drops are making up for it. Oh, I got some. The Blighted Super Restores, four of them. That is pretty nice actually to use even in the cave. I believe I've been here now for around one and a half hour and I would say that probably with my stats and the Dragon Scimitar it's not really quite worth it yet. You can see all the loot and all the kills I did here. I did some Pyre Fiends. Of course I did make more than my money back but uh, currently I'm killing them pretty slow. I have to bank now and then so it's probably better to just wait until I have some better weapons like tier 70 weapons where I can kill them a lot more efficiently but uh, for now I'm going to leave the Revenant. I'm going to be using all the raw food that I got from Temporos to get my cooking up. I'm 38 now and I'm using the Lumbridge range because it has a reduced burn rate and I should be fine even without the cooking gauntlets. Bit of a milestone as well, just hit 40 hunter and I am now up to 51 cooking but I still have some more stuff to cook so we're not done quite yet. That's all the cooking done and I have now resupplied myself for some food to do more winter tod because we basically had nothing. I was using salamons and trouts which is not very good. So having lobsters and like 100 swordfish is going to last me a while. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. And I am right now 58 cooking, so we got a good amount of total levels from that. And this is how many crates I've collected casually over the video. And this is 27 crates, so let's see if we can get lucky and get a Tome of Fire from this. Otherwise, I still have to continue the grind, of course, but uh, yeah, let's hopefully get lucky. 
Oh, there we have the Bruma Torch, that is a new unique, that actually works as a light source I'm pretty sure, so that is actually a pretty useful item overall. Another Bruma Torch, like two crates after that or something. And the last crates, I'll just uh, open them all on video, and a th <laughs> oh my god, a third Bruma Torch. Okay, well, let's open these quick, and we get, oh, Pyromancer's Boots, that is now the entire set. But uh, no Tomo Fire just yet. I'm going to go into the bank and I think, let me see on Rune Light if we can see everything. Yeah, just give me one sec. All the loot that we got from those crates was right here 260k, got two Rainar Seeds, which is pretty good. And we got four Rainars as well for Prey Potions, but three Bruma Torches. That is uh, quite something. It is kind of annoying that I have to do Winter Todd a bit later into the series instead of in the beginning, but I really do want that Tomo Fire and just get into Solra right away, so I am going to keep doing this for a while. Hopefully get some of my teammates to do it as well to uh, get my chances up of getting that Tomo Fire. But for now, this is going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.